In this video, I am going to demonstrate how to do an orthographic projection of a spray bottle. So we're going to have a top view, a front view, and a side view. And this is going to be the bottle that we are, well, I am going to draw. You can have a go afterwards, or as I am going through all the steps, you can draw along with me if you're interested. Now, the proportions of this bottle I've kind of sketched out on I've done a little draft essentially on these little post-it notes um, and I'm focusing on the front view um, which has the most detail and the main thing is that um, it has I want to observe the main proportions of it okay so that's what I'm drafting out first it's one wide and it's three high um, so that top section of the nozzle is in its own little square essentially and the glass bottle itself is two tall, two sections tall and one of those wide. So I'm essentially stacking three squares on top of each other, finding the center line and then marking out um, how the different elements connect to one another. Um, I can start to add in the shape that I can observe um, like the rounded edge of the bottle where the nozzle is going to connect to and the main thing that I'm trying to get is symmetry here so I want to project across from one side to another um, and you'll often see me dragging a line across to the other side so horizontally or vertically um, projecting that information so it is mirrored on the other side and create symmetry. The top part of the spray bottle is the most intricate and I really need to observe how all the elements relate to one another, where edges start and finish. So I need to again use those projection lines and draft everything out with light construction lines first to test things out before I um before I change anything or and darken any elements in this little um lever it actually sticks out from my square um so I've really had to look at the form itself and notice that um it sticks a little bit out um but it's also in line with the bottom of the um the bottle cap essentially of the bottle. Once I'm really happy with all the edges, I can start to go over and have a firm line that confirms the outline, the edge of the different parts or forms of this. So I've got my front view. Let's move on to the side view. The first thing I need to do is making sure that I have space to project. So my top view I'm going to have a little gap and then my side view I need to have the same size gap. So I'm going to put in my 45 degree projection line now um, just so that I can be sure to um, have enough space on my page. So the gap's pretty small this time and here is the side view that I'm going to be drawing now. The key thing is to project my information across to the right um, horizontally and I know that because um, the bottle is a, a cylinder I can just repeat that width across and from the center line I can start to put in the next elements that are essentially a repeat. So the bottle cap kind of nozzle um, that the spray bottle nozzle goes on top of, I can repeat that and then these the curves of the top of the bottle also need to be repeated. Once I'm happy with elements I can darken them in, especially because I've got that um, reference of the same, essentially the same view, because the bottom of that bottle doesn't change in its proportions or details from the front to the side. This little, like, these little ridges along the bottle cap I really want to put in. Um, they're an interesting feature, so I want to observe the proportions of them and add them along. You can see them in the view as I'm holding the bottle close by as a reference. So if you're observing an object or representing something, you can start to add in 
such details. It adds far more reality to the sketch and that detail draws a viewer in. Here I'm kind of marking out all the little elements and change of form that the this top nozzle part has, which is interesting. I didn't really um, know this about the shape until I started to observe it and look at how it changes. So all of this is really important to do with light lines first, drafting it out before you confirm it with a, a firm edge. This is the top view. Okay, I have been observing the top view as I had to construct that side view, um, but now I'm going to draw it in this top square. So I've projected my information up to that 45 degree line where it intersects or hits that 45. It turns into a horizontal line and goes across to the top view where I can take that information and I'm really actually only projecting, I project it up one half and I'm just going to reflect it when I get to that point in the top view. As I draw my circle, I'm actually um, blending in opposing um, straight edges rather than focusing on a circle. Um, that's a technique I would show in another video. I'm not going to focus on that in this one. So yeah, having a good look at the proportions and where things start to turn into a curve. Um, you can probably see that I, was, I had missed an edge in there, so it looked, didn't look very um, symmetrical. Projecting up the information of the actual nozzle, and later on I need to bring up that um, lever as well. So make sure your object, if you are trying to represent in an orthographic projection, you're really considering that this is a 2D view and you're really only seeing a set of surfaces in each view. And that projection, that information that aligns, um, just builds the greater picture. Okay. So we don't actually see the bottle cap top in that top view. Um, it is actually quite simple once you observe it. So that view, um, top view, the label underneath clarifies that and that is the final orthographic projection, three views in third angle orthographic of a spray bottle. Be aware of your projection and your proportions as you are constructing a orthographic projection of a real life object.